Coming to you from the desk of the Fantasy Football Happy Hour for NFL Draft Night Round 1. I'm Connor Rogers alongside Matthew Berry, dressed for the occasion. Jay Croucher, also dressed for the occasion. <laughs> Fellas, one bold prediction. What are you looking forward to tonight and one bold prediction from each of you? I was told we were all wearing tuxes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm very upset about that. One bold prediction. Packers take a wide receiver in round one. They never took one while Aaron Rodgers was the quarterback. I think they take one tonight. Just makes sense. Would be the total Packers thing to do is after they get rid of number 12, now they draft him a wide receiver. Yeah, my first bold prediction is that uh, Matthew Berry replaces Nick Cage in Renfield 2. Uh, Count Von Berry <laughs> gets that. Oh, that's, that's poor. Yes. Uh, my NFL non Van Pirk prediction is that the Chargers dropped a weapon for Justin Herbert. Yep. Most likely a receiver, potentially a tight end, but Herbert will come out of this with a weapon. For me, we've talked about four quarterbacks going in the top 10 to 12 picks for a long time. I think five go in the first round with somebody coming back in from round two to the end of round one to grab Hendon Hooker. And we will be doing this all night, reacting to the picks throughout round one. So stay with us right here at NBC Sports. Yeah, we'll see how long I last in this outfit. With the first overall pick of the 2023 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers, no surprise here, guys. They take quarterback Bryce Young after making the big move all the way up to number one. Barry, I would say we'll start with the fantasy impact for Bryce Young, but I don't know how we start with anything else but whatever this Look, is. Look, I, I was told we were all dressing in tuxes. You I got were, a bad demo, to. everything. Listen, it's draft night. You dress up for the occasion, right? Dress for the job you Not want. Not like that, but that's okay. <laughs> that, you don't like my, my vampire look? Yeah, count on Barry. It is what it is. It's fine. You know what? It's, look, uh, I want to suck <laughs> your blood. Uh, all right, look, here's what I'll tell you about Bryce Young, right? Uh, very talented player. I am a little bit nervous about the size. 5'10", 204 pounds. I, I'm sort of questioning the 204 pounds. It's, too. it's I've, not real. <laughs> I, I've, yeah. I've, sta I've stood next to him. I'm 200 pounds, and I was definitely heavier than him when I met him. Uh, but everything else, the athleticism, the intelligence, you get all of that. So hopefully this size is an outlier. But this much is clear. He's the Panthers guy. Fantasy-wise, I don't know that it makes that much of an impact, right? I mean, like, they're going to be a fairly conservative offense. They have a really good offensive line. They have a they have what they think is a strong running game with Miles Sanders who got the big deal under Frank Reich, reunited there, and Chuba Hubbard, of course. They have a good defense, so they don't need to get into shootouts, and it's a weak division. So whether it's DJ Shark or Adam Thielen or Hayden Hurst, like, just like they'll be fine, but no one that you're excited to leave your, your fantasy draft with. As for Bryce Young, I think he's a low-end QB2, somebody that maybe you'll use in the right matchup in the second half of the season, but... He's much more of a dynasty pick for fantasy than he is a, a you know, redraft guy this year. Yeah, it's difficult to make salient points off of the opposite of that outfit, but I'll give it a go. Uh, Connor, right now the Panthers, their you second like the favorite to win the NFC South, which says a lot about the NFC South. But do you think that Bryce Young makes them a potential playoff team? What do you expect from him in the short term and the long term? I do, because there are wins for the taking in this division, and they got themselves a field general, somebody that can make reads, full field reads. He's excellent pre-snap, reading coverages, throwing under pressure. I mean, in between the numbers 0 to 20, he completed 112 of his 147 attempts. Surgical passer. I agree with you. You worry about the size long term, but what he brings right away is going to lead to many more wins. The Panthers have been waiting for their franchise quarterback for quite some time. I think they got the answer in this draft at number one. I'm glad they made the move. With the second overall pick, the Houston Texans, after a lot of different debate and mystery here, guys, they take C.J. Stroud, the quarterback out of Ohio State. So we heard they could have gone defense. We heard Will Levis connected to this pick. Ultimately, we make what they make what we think was the right decision in taking C.J. Stroud. Yeah, no question about it. Quick question for you guys. Who had the, uh, who had, who's had the tougher night? Me in this outfit or that Reddit guy that said Levis was going number one overall? Hey. Tough start. Tough start. Tough start for both of us. But a great start for the Houston Texans who get the second most pro-ready quarterback coming out of college in C.J. Stroud. Now, they don't have a ton to throw to there. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, I think there's not a lot of fantasy value to have in C.J. Stroud in redraft. I think he's in that 25 to 30 range among quarterbacks. But I think dynasty-wise, off the chart, 6'3", 214 pounds. This is a guy who's had 40 touchdowns in back-to-back -back seasons, the only quarterback in college that can say that over the last two seasons. I just think he's awesome. I personally actually prefer Stroud to Bryce Young in Dynasty. Yeah, it certainly seems like the right pick. It didn't seem like they were going to make it. In the past 24 hours, Stroud is actually the fourth favorite to go second. And out of nowhere, he comes and he's, he's the pick. And Connor, what do you expect from him in, in year one? 
I think number one, it just gives them consistency at the position that they've lacked since they traded Deshaun Watson. And the fact that he's just so smooth mechanically, Stroud, when you give him time, and they have pieces on the offensive line, especially Laramie Tunzel there, they'll be able to protect him. He shouldn't be under pressure a ton where everything in structure uh, should be complete for Stroud. I just think he can hit all three levels. Everything is very routine for him. He's comfortable. He's been very vocal. I need to unlock more athletic athleticism and running ability, and that's something that they'll work on with him as well. Like you hinted at, Barry, it's about getting more weapons now for the Texans to I mean, help they've him got, out. They've got Robert Woods, who looked totally done last year. Nico yeah. Collins, we're waiting for him to break out. I mean, John no Mechie, though, back from cancer. John Mechie, yeah, so. 100%. No, no, John Mechie, we liked out of, out of college. They got Dalton Schultz, who's a nice pass-catching tight end. Maybe he becomes a little bit of sleeper with Stroud under center, but this is a pick for the future, not necessarily this year in fantasy. Do you think he will run more this year? Because that was watching Ohio State, Georgia. That was the thing that stood out the most is his mobility. Yeah, I think he will. I think he's somebody that will understand it's not going to be as easy at the next level. A lot of the games will feel like that Georgia game where, listen, my first read's not always going to be open. My second read's not always going to be open. I have to. He's a good extender. That's what I like about Stroud. He'll be able to extend plays, not always need to just run, um, but they need to get more weapons, and they'll have the opportunity to do that with all the picks they have in the rest of this draft. But the Texans make the logical decision and take C.J. Stroud number two overall. The Colts take a massive swing with the fourth overall pick in the NFL draft, and they take Anthony Richardson. No yes. bigger traits prospect, guys. I love it. And I love it too, right? Shane Steichen comes over from Philadelphia, and they take a quarterback that's going to need time. He's going to need seasoning, but he can run. He's explosive, and right. he can throw it a mile. Yeah, a thousand percent. So you mentioned Steichen coming over from Philadelphia and all the work that he did with, with Jalen Hurts and a mobile quarterback. So Hurts, also a raw prospect coming out of college as well. So this makes a ton of sense. And honestly, first off, I think he's the number one pick at quarterback in Dynasty. Yep. Again, because of the rushing and, and throwing ability and potential there. I also think he's the number one pick of the rookie quarterbacks in fantasy this year, especially in a one uh, in a one quarterback league, because you think about like, we'll see the, the passing is going to be raw. No question about it. But because the rushing we've seen, look, Tim Tebow, you know, was a viable fantasy quarterback because of the running. So I think he's I prefer him to Stroud or Young, both in Dynasty and in redraft because the the the, the you know, the, the it's off the roof. Right. And I whatever Michael Pittman has produced with poor quarterback play throughout his career, candidly. So this will be no different. He'll be fine as a top 20 ish wide receiver. Yeah, massive stunner. Will Levis close minus 1500 to go for. But I love this move. What do you think of Richardson's upside? It is so exciting. The rushing sets the floor for Richardson. His running ability is always going to give you something. It's can you dial in on the intermediate and short accuracy? And he's going to have time to do that. I don't know if you know he'll get a chance to start over Gardner Minshew. We'll see. Maybe they give him the time. But the deep throwing, he's a rare runner. He's a big bodied pocket passer that has the ability to get outside the pocket and either get upfield for explosive runs or or just make plays with his feet to extend that deep throwing. So this is the this is the swing. This is the big swing yeah. in the draft, and I love it for the Colts. And I kind of like him in a one quarterback league. Again, draft him, see what you get, and if he fails out, then you've still got a wide pool of people to grab. You know, because quarterback so deep in a one QB league in redraft leagues this year. With the eighth overall pick, the Atlanta Falcons, they do it, guys. They take B. John Robinson, one of the best players in this draft, and no doubt, Matthew Berry, the most fantasy-relevant player in this draft. No question about it. Really excited. You think about B. John Robinson being paired with Kyle Pitts, two really good blockers for Tyler Algier, <laughs> because we know that's what Arthur Smith likes to do, take really high-quality offensive players and then not use them on the field. I have to believe... I am hoping among hope that, you know, they do what they should do, which is just feed Bijan the Rock. Remember, this is a Falcons team that last year, second in the NFL in terms of running back carries, whether it was Algier, whether it was, whether it was Cordero Patterson, you know, you had some Caleb Huntley in there. Now they get Bijan Robinson, who had eight career receiving touchdowns. The key here is, I think he's a top 10 fantasy running back. I think he's a first round pick. I think the question is, how much is he involved in the passing game? And I think, honestly, Jay, some of that comes down to who's their quarterback? Because I feel like if it's Taylor Heineke, I feel better about his chances of being used in the passing game than I do about Desmond Ritter. Because we saw it with Heineke in Washington, whether it was J.D. McKissick or Antonio Gibson or even Brian Robinson a little bit towards the end. 
Heineke doesn't – he's okay checking it down. We just didn't see that from Ritter last year. Yeah. Firstly, it's disappointing you didn't put the Dracula cape back on for the Bijan pick. Would have uh, expected he deserved that. It. Bijan, it was fair. Bijan he didn't deserve expected it. that I too. apologize to Bijan. Uh, fair. Secondly, he was always favored to go to the Falcons. Just we thought he'd probably, they'd probably trade back and take him maybe in the teens. But they said, no, nah, we'll just take him at eight. Who cares? Yeah. Uh, is there any concern about Tyler Algier cutting into his workload? Or Bijan's just such a player that it's just going to be the Bijan? He's show. just such a three-down player. I mean, guys, look at the numbers here. 104 missed tackles forced this year. That's a good career yeah. for a lot of college players. 4.2 yards after contact per attempt, 41 explosive runs, those long chunk plays. And this is a special player. They'd motion him out in the slot and have him run a full route trip. That, post that, screens. That's, that's the concern that's, is will yeah. they be – because he's a player that you can be that creative with. He is that good. He is that versatile. It's just will the Falcons, who were super conservative last year on offense, will they try to use him – Honestly, in some of the ways they kind of did with Cordero Patterson last year where they used him in a variety of ways. And now you've got B. John Robinson, who candidly is better than Cordero Patterson. As much as we love Cordero here, I mean, you know me, I've, I've been uh, a flag bearer for him for a long time. But um, there's an opportunity for him to be a top five fantasy running back easy if they use him the right way. Absolutely. Falcons fans, don't let the running back value discourse drive you insane. Enjoy that you just got a top five player in this year's draft. Maybe the biggest surprise of the 2023 NFL draft so far, the Detroit Lions, they move back to 12, yep. get some extra draft capital, and they take Jameer Gibbs running back out of Alabama. Guys, two running backs going to the top 15 in round yeah, one. Yeah, shocking. It's not that we don't like Gibbs. We love Gibbs. He was our number two running back collectively, yes. right? It's just it's shocking the fit and also the draft, uh, the draft capital to be a top 12 pick as a running back especially when you think about who's on the roster. What this tells me very clearly is that the Lions hate DeAndre Swift. Yeah, hate you know how like when Jay to, leaves and you and I just <laughs> MFJ? Yeah, kind of feels that's sad. what it's happens feel that way. on the Lions oh. when Sl Swift leaves. Yeah. They just, they don't like him. Jay Boy. Andre Swift. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. That is you. Yeah. I mean, I just, I hate yeah. to tell you, but like, honestly, <laughs> you have to assume, you have to assume that they're just sort of done with DeAndre Swift. Like for whatever reason, like they, I guess the concerns about the health, but like, this is a player that sort of fits into that role, right? They they signed David Montgomery to be the banger to sort of take that Jamal Williams role. And so you think about DeAndre Swift, who over the last two years has over 70 targets. Again, and that's a guy that wasn't always on the field. And so you think about how exciting this offense is, and it's an explosive one. And so Gibbs, who's a really good pass catcher, top five among receptions and receiving yards among running backs last year in college. I, I think – Gibbs is probably a top 30 running back because he's going to split time with Montgomery. But assuming Swift is not on the team, that's where my ranking is, he'll be right in that 25 to 30 range for me as a really nice number three running back in PPR. Well, they're going to play him because they spent all this capital on exactly. him. So that helps. Uh, look, I think the Lions, they're the favorite to win a division. They're the fourth favorite in the NFC behind the Eagles, 49ers, and Cowboys. This is a team that's right there, and they've just spent the number 12 pick on a running back when they've already got Swift and Montgomery. I don't understand it at all, Connor, but Gibbs is a good player. From a team-building perspective, it's odd. There's no way around it. We thought we loved Gibbs on this desk. We thought yeah. we were leading the charge, and the yeah. Lions were like, uh, we're going to lap <laughs> you right now. So, I mean, look at Gibbs, lightning quick feet, great acceleration. He caught 42 passes last year for almost 400 yards, only dropped one. He's a great pass catching back, but you have a problem with maybe a running back that's struggling to stay healthy because of size, and you take another undersized running back with a top 15 pick. Love Gibbs. Think he'll, have, he'll be relevant in fantasy, but for the Lions, there's no denying this is a big shocker. It, well, right, unless they get rid of Swift, unless they have a plan to, to move Swift, and then maybe it all makes sense. I will say the Lions have made a lot of right moves over the last couple of years, so give them the benefit of the doubt. And Gibbs, yeah. I think, is probably a better NFL player for the Lions than he is fantasy asset. But, yes, he will have value in fantasy, and again, as a top 30 play for me, especially in PPR. With their second pick in the first round, the Seattle Seahawks take Jackson, Smith, and Jigba, the first wide receiver to come off the board. So they get a number one corner in Devin Witherspoon at the top of the draft. And now right in the middle of round one here, guys, the first wide receiver in JSN comes off the board. Boy, is this wide receiver room looking good. It, listen, it's – Seattle's having a great draft, awesome and I think draft. this is a really nice pick for them NFL-wise. Fantasy-wise, like, when was the last time Seattle had a viable third wide receiver? We know it's DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf. It's still going to be a run-first team under Pete Carroll. It's still going to be conservative. This is good for Geno Smith. I actually think this move fantasy-wise hurts Metcalf and Lockett more than it helps JSN. We love JSN as a player, and dynasty-wise, I think he's going to be fine, but it's hard to see him as anything other than maybe a borderline top 50 wide receiver in redraft. I basically, 
I don't mind drafting him at the end of your draft as a flyer and see what happens with this offense, but as long as Metcalf and Lockett are healthy, I can't see JSN having a significant fantasy impact week in, week out. Better NFL move than fantasy move. Yeah, I think there was a higher ceiling for JSN in other spots like potentially Green Bay or New England where he had less competition for target share. But I think the story here is the Seahawks going all in around Geno Smith. Yeah. Because there was a thought that they might draft an Anthony Richardson at five. Instead, they get Witherspoon and JSN. And this is a team that's built around Geno now. I mean, they could have had Levis here like late in the first round and they passed on him. I'll say this, in terms of landing spots, JSN goes to a place where he can live in the slot right away. Sure, absolutely. And that is going to make his transition as a rookie wide receiver much easier. So I love the landing spot. I agree with you, Barry. Real football standpoint, you love well, it. Fantasy, a lot of mouths to feed now. Gino, very accurate. Right, and obviously you've got Lockett and Metcalf on the outside, and so JSN is a, is a safety valve. Perfect, great. You know what I mean? Like, And all of a sudden you add those three pieces – to Kenneth Walker, a full year of Ken Walker. Like, all of a sudden, this offense with Geno back, pretty, pretty interesting. If you're a Seattle fan, I think you should be happy tonight. Awesome draft so far for the Seahawks. The run on wide receivers is finally on, gentlemen. Quinton Johnston, TCU wide receiver, goes 21 to the Chargers. They get a weapon for Justin Herbert. What kind of a weapon are they getting? A true outside target that can play above the rim. Needs to be more consistent catching the football. Had the eight drops this year, but Quinton Johnston can make the really difficult plays, especially in the red zone. And I'll tell you this, for his size, he's very shifty with the ball in his hands. You'd just like to see more consistency. 11 of his 14 games, he was held to less than five catches. He only clips the 100-yard mark in four of those. 14 games so needs to dial on the consistency but in this offense Matthew Barry he doesn't need to be the guy right away no he doesn't I'm going to say two things that are going to seem contradictory but I promise you they make sense which is that I love this pick and he's outside my top 50 and here's why look they have Keenan Allen they have Mike Williams they have in theory maybe Austin Eckler out of the backfield as well right they they he's going to be low on the pecking order obviously Josh Palmer as well is still there but both Mike Williams and Keenan Allen have suffered a lot of injuries. Keenan Allen definitely on the wrong side of 30 here. So I think while he's not somebody I'm drafting and redraft, except maybe very late as a flyer, I think there is absolutely a – there will be a fantasy football happy hour episode this year where we're talking about go pick up Quinton Johnson because he could easily play his way into an elite offense. And I love him in Dynasty. This is a great landing spot for him to grow alongside Justin Herbert. Yeah, we've waited for a while to see Herbert with a full complement of weapons just because we know what kind of talent he is. And it looks like this is the year that we might get it. Yeah, you know what? It's interesting. We talked to a friend of the podcast, Austin Eckler, last year. And one of the things he said is that they really missed – a deep threat that when Jalen Guyton went down in the preseason that that you know took away that big vertical threat that they had in the offense and so Johnson gives them that it's yes, one of the does. reasons why Eckler got so many dump offs last year is they didn't have a vertical threat so I think look Eckler's still a, a monster but assuming he comes back maybe you could see a slight reduction in his passing game usage because they now have a guy in Johnson that can fly. Yep. I saw a very similar player to Martavis Bryant, and we know they like the jump ball wide receivers. So, Quentin Johnson, it'll be exciting to watch him work with Herbert as they try to get more vertical. What a couple weeks for the Baltimore Ravens in their offense. Odell Beckham in the fold, Lamar Jackson extended, and now Zay Flowers taken in the first round. Guys, for how long did we say this offense has no wide receivers? We don't know when Lamar is coming back. Things are looking pretty good for the Ravens. Well, they're looking good for Lamar. Suddenly a, uh, a lot of weapons here, and this could be an amazing pick. This could be a nothing pick as it relates to fantasy football. Love the pick for the Ravens. Love the player. I think the question here is just like, look, Rashad Bateman and Odell Beckham Jr., both super talented. Both have dealt with a lot of injuries over their career. This is a team that last year was 28th in pass attempts. They like to run the ball, and yes, Tyler Huntley played a lot of those games down the stretch, but still, whether it's Lamar, whether it's Tyler Huntley, traditionally, they've been more of a run-first team. This passing offense still goes through Mark Andrews. They've also got Isaiah Likely there. They've suddenly got a ton of mouths to feed, which is great. Listen, you sign your quarterback to, you know, almost a quarter of a billion dollar contract. You want to give him some stuff, some players to throw to. Zay Flowers, again, this is one of those things where I feel like a really good real-life pick. And by the way, if OBJ and Bateman are banged up, then Zay Flowers is going to be somewhere we're talking about on Fantasy Football Happy Hour. But as it relates right now, he's not a guy you're drafting in redraft this season. Much more of a dynasty pick. Yep.
Baltimore's my Super Bowl team now, Matthew. I just love this team, what they've done. They were so close to beating a Super Bowl caliber Bengals team without Lamar, without any receivers. And now yeah. they're just loaded. And what are they getting in Zay? Just an electric player. Some guys just move differently, right? You watch him and you see the way he can run with the ball in his hands. But his ability to separate is phenomenal. And for Todd Munkin's offense, Todd Munkin's first year in Baltimore, he's getting more pass catchers to run a more traditional offense. I'm really curious, Matthew, to see if – obviously the head coach makes a lot of the decisions sure. as well. Are they going to get away from being so run heavy? We're going to find out. Maybe Zay Flowers is a sign of, hey, we want to get our receivers more involved. Yeah, it will be really interesting because obviously Munkin's going to have a say in playing the call, uh, calling the plays, but also Harbaugh's got a thing. And also it's Lamar. Like, how many times have we just seen Lamar drop back to pass? He sees some pressure. He says, screw it. I'm just going to outrun everybody, right? So, ultimately, some of that is on Lamar. But now that he's been paid, maybe he's like, you know what? <laughs> now that I've got my you do money. The running. Yeah, you guys do the running. Let me just hit my guys. Either way, I think it's a great landing spot for Zay Flowers from a real-life NFL perspective. Okay, four wide receivers in a row. The run is on, gentlemen. I uh, didn't know when they were going to start, but JSN has kicked everything off. And Jordan Addison goes 23 to the Minnesota Vikings to play alongside Justin Jefferson. What do you make of the pick, Matthew? It's an interesting one, right? So, well, look, we know the kid can play. Connor, you'll talk about it a little bit yeah. more. But this is a guy who won the Blitnikoff Award when he was at Pittsburgh in 2021. And he now he goes to a Vikings offense. The two things, right? Okay. Adam Thielen, now in Carolina, 16% target share. He leaves behind. K.J. Osborne was the number three wide receiver last year. He had 90 targets. Yes, they added Hawkinson midseason, but still, this is an interesting guy that obviously is going to see better coverage considering how much defensive coverage is going to shift to Justin Jefferson. So, nice landing spot, a good weapon for Kirk Cousins here. Kind of a late-round flyer type, but potentially some redraft value in deeper leagues this year. Yeah, I'll take it one step further. I think he can be more impactful as a rookie than the three guys just taken ahead of him. He was my number two wide receiver in this draft, the top 20 player. I saw T.Y. Hilton on film. Sure, he's about 175 pounds, but he won the Balikin off two years ago with Kenny Pickett. He goes to USC. What does he need to do? Get the drop rate in a better place, and he catches everything. Gets open at all three levels of the field, polishing his routes. Yeah. I love Jordan Addison. The, the bottom line is he didn't run in the four threes in the 170s, so everybody jumped off that bandwagon. After for two years, he was one of the best wide receivers in the entire country. So playing with Justin Jefferson with a he quarterback. Gets open. He, he gets, gets open. Yeah. In an offense that that'll be structured for you. Jordan Addison, I think, is going to have a really nice rookie season. Yep. This offense is loaded now between Jefferson, Osborne, Hawkinson, full season, uh, and the offensive line, which I think is a little bit underrated. So huge potential Dalvin for Cook's Minnesota. Still there. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll Cook see what happens with Dalvin it. Cook. Yeah. But look, we know Kevin O'Connell is an aggressive, offensive-minded play caller. I was in on Kirk Cousins last year. I'm going to be back in yep. on Kirk Cousins. No one ever yep, likes Kirk Cousins for fantasy. But you know what? To your point, he's got a lot of weapons in a pass-happy offense. Jordan Addison, I think this is a great pick for the Vikings long-term. And fantasy-wise, he's a pretty interesting sleeper towards the end of your draft this year. We know how aggressive Brandon Bean can get in the draft each year, and he does it again, guys. He moves up a couple spots and takes tight end Dalton Kincaid out of Utah, 25th overall in the draft. With a wide receiver for the Bills, running back for the Bills, plot twist, and a tight, another tight end for the Buffalo Yeah, Bills. and they move up because, you know, he had been rumored to be tied to Dallas, that the Cowboys were really interested in Kincaid, so they move one spot ahead of Dallas to go ahead and get their guy. And I weirdly think, I think they got their wide receiver. He just happens to qualify at tight end because of where him. he played in college. But the fact of the matter is, is they need a slot guy, right? I mean, they got some moments out of Shakur last year, and they, you know, they lost Jamison Crowder. But look, it's Diggs and Gabe Davis on the outside. They need someone in the middle, and I think that's what Dalton Kincaid is going to be for them. He's he's basically a glorified wide receiver, right? He's not a traditional tight end, Connor Rogers, and they have a guy they like at that position in Dawson Knox. Exactly. This doesn't make Dawson Knox just exit the field all the no. time. You're going to play them together. Together. And when you look at Kincaid, Barry, I thought he had the best hands in the draft. Yeah. Just the best natural pass catcher. He's got the straight line speed to run up the seam. And now they get bigger with their pass catchers as well. So for the Bills, this you're right. This fills their wide receiver void. It's just with a pass catching tight end. And this was a team that needed to diversify its offense because yes. it felt very Josh Allen centric. Now they got a different type of weapon. I mean, they're the second favorite right now to win the Super Bowl. Uh, over teams like the Bengals, over our New York Jets. And I think that they needed a weapon like this to justify that standing in a really loaded AFC. Yeah, he's going to be, assuming he qualifies at tight end, you know, in, in fantasy games, he will. he's going to be yep. outside the top 20 at tight end. Because, again, I mean, look, Dawson Knox, very touchdown dependent. They don't really go to the tight end. I think he, again, a nicer player for the Bills and Josh Allen, not somebody that's going to be super fantasy relevant this year unless something happens to Dawson Knox. But – a really good weapon for Josh Allen and the Bills.
Round one of the 2023 NFL Draft is in the books, and guys, no other way to close this out than talking about some winners, some teams that did really well, some players that did well, and unfortunately some losers. Jay, who are you starting with? By the way, thank you for looking at me when you said winner and uh, him when you said loser. Uh, thank you very much. You're learning. Here. You're I'm learning. Back. Yeah, uh, you're I fantastic. So now it's me and you against him. Yes. This is good. Uh, you've this made your allegiance this clear. Yeah, you're going the bow tie guy. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> fantastic. No, that's understood. Uh, my winners are the two best run organizations in the NFL, in my opinion, the Baltimore Ravens and the Philadelphia Eagles. The Ravens, they get Zay Flowers. They get another weapon for Lamar Jackson. Great day for the Baltimore Ravens overall with Jackson signing the extension. And then the Eagles, I think that's self-explanatory to get Jalen Carter at 9, to get Nolan Smith at 30. I mean, Nolan Smith was supposed to go 10. They got 9 and 10, but they got them at 9 and 30. So, amazing day for the Philadelphia Eagles. And then in terms of losers, I really liked that the Texans, that they got CJ Stroud, but they gave up way too much for Will Anderson. So, I think that was a loss. And just quickly, Offensive Rookie of the Year odds are already up. Uh, it comes quick. And uh, Bryce Young and Bijan Robinson, they're the two favorites at plus 400. And then CJ Stroud plus 650. I think it'll be one of those three guys. Barry, what'd you like tonight? Well, I think uh, in terms of winners, I'll say, I'll say uh, Justin Herbert. You know, getting Quinton Johnson, again, we talked about how the Chargers offense really needed that vertical speed. And so, look, Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, both injury prone, both a little bit older as well as they get on. So I think Quinton Johnson, this is just a great, it's a great landing spot for him long term. But this helps Justin Herbert, that entire Chargers offense. I'll also say the Vikings adding Jordan Addison. We talked about this during the show, but my expectation is of the day one rookie wide receivers, Jordan Addison is going to be the best fantasy producer this season, stepping into a 16% target share vacated by Adam Thielen, KJ Osborne, 90 targets last year. It's going to be a pass first, pass happy offense under Kevin O'Connell in year two. So I really like Addison uh, as a winner and the Vikings overall. In terms of losers, got to be DeAndre Swift. Like, we already knew they didn't like him because they wouldn't give him <laughs> double digit touches. But when you draft Jamar Gibbs, like, DeAndre Swift is going to play for another team this year than the Detroit Lions. And also Tyler Algier, fifth round rookie who ran for 1,000 yards. You're like, hey, man, I made something of myself. And the Falcons say, like, no, 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 we're going to use a top 10 pick on Bijan Robinson, who, by the way, is awesome. So those are the two unfortunate losers, DeAndre Swift and Tyler Algier. Connor, uh, what'd you see? Seattle. I mean, the Seattle Seahawks. I just love that they walked out of this draft with two of my top 12 players. Devin Witherspoon, my top corner, and he was the sixth overall player for me. And they get Jackson Smith and Jigba. When I watch Seattle, especially when Tyler Lockett got hurt, you're just yelling that you wish they had one more target through the air. Now they get Jackson Smith and Jigbit that just pencils into the slot for them, can do all the dirty work and catch, make the tough catches in traffic in the middle of the field. Seattle crushed the draft last year, and they're trying to put on an encore this year, and they did that in night one. One loser for me, or maybe a lot of losers here, the tight end needy teams that just let Michael Mayer fall, 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 and not go in the first round. I just think when you look at it with Michael Mayer, uh, he's a great player. Sure, he might not have – the speed or athleticism of a Kincaid, but he does a lot of the tough red zone work and can make all those first down catches. Caught 89 first downs over the last two seasons. I think a lot of teams that passed on Mayer tonight are really going to regret it when he's a top 10 tight, in the NFL, tight end in the NFL for a really long time. A lot of winners tonight, a lot of losers tonight, but perhaps no bigger loser out there than Reddit. And all the idiots that bet Will Levis number one overall because of some rando on Reddit saying he heard that Levis was telling buddies that he was going number one overall. As we sit here tonight, Will Levis will be a day two pick. Hey, it wasn't a Unbel random guy, Matthew. It was, it was user sale agreeable 2834. And, uh, exactly. You know, people, were talking about, some respect. people were talking about Jimmy Butler's series against the, Miami, the <laughs> Milwaukee Bucks. I mean, really, it was sale agreeable 2834 who stole the week. But uh, a tough scene, and he lost his series. Uh, uh, anyway, right. bad day for Reddit. Bad day for everyone that bet based on Reddit. Serves you right. Serves you right. They're the biggest losers tonight. I mean, come on. They are. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotorworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotorworld, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.